Single Store is a Silicon Valley based database that believes in the power of real time. The company offers streaming data ingestion, transaction and analytic support and all the functions to make AI effective, allowing data to be analyzed, contextualized and transacted immediately. I'm Andrew Wilson and I sat down here in Davos with CEO Raj Verma to discuss the importance of high fidelity at speed. Raj, great to see you. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. First of all, give us an overview, why don't you, about Single Store, what it is you do, and what kind of clients you have. Yeah, Single Store is a database company based out of Silicon Valley uh, in, the, in the US. And Andrew, uh, so far in the world, uh, you know, it was divided from a database perspective into transactional databases and analytical databases. Transactional databases needed a high fidelity signature, so as to speak, of a transaction having occurred. And so they, they focused on transactional fidelity, and then you take those transactions and then throw them over the wall to an analytical database, and then you'll gain insights. And that's how the businesses worked. In today's sort of AI, generative AI world, when you are moving data between transactional systems and analytical systems, you are doing two things. One is latency, so you are just introducing uh, a lot of time into the entire movement of data. The second thing is you introduce risk. When data moves, bad things happen, both from a risk perspective and in the cloud world, it's also expensive. So single store, as the name signifies, is a single database where you can transact with high fidelity and reason with data without moving data in a hybrid multi-cloud environment with single digit millisecond response times. We actually release a product uh, next week where it also helps you through the use of vector searches and hybrid searches and full text search to be able to contextualize data so that you can actually effectively build generative AI applications and single store. So in short, you can transact, analyze, and contextualize data in one single database rather than having 15 databases to accomplish the same. So there'll be plenty of people looking at us talking now who will know exactly what you're talking about, but some would wonder, so what kind of clients make use of your services? Yeah, any, uh, we typically have applications which are client facing or internet facing where the data refreshes very frequently where the need for real-time insights. And by the way, Andrew, as you know, real-time is a much used and abused word. You know, what is real-time? Is it every minute, every hour, every day? We call, and in fact, that's one of the reasons we call ourselves a real, real-time company, which essentially offers you the right context almost by the millisecond, right? So um, any, any, um, Banks, for example, for personalization, everyone's really going after client personalization using Gen AI. And for that, you require the right information and context, which really gives you knowledge about the client, and then to be able to present it to the client uh, in the same manner. We actually, one of my favorite examples is a ride sharing company that uses our database for the entire pricing algorithm. So if you see pricing, you want to go from X to Y, uh, it actually takes real-time data on traffic and weather if there's a you know, Giants game going on or what have you, and calculates how much time you are estimated to take from your, uh, from your place to the destination, compares it to the pricing algorithm, and then uh, depending on the time lapse, either a search pricing happens or it doesn't. And all of that has to happen in a matter of seconds. And that's where we come in. And uh, yeah. You've mentioned AI a couple of times. A few years ago, no one was talking about AI. Now here, particularly in a place like Davos, it is almost at the top, if not at the top, of the agenda. So what are the challenges and the risks ahead of us now as we move into an AI-driven data world? Yeah, um, I think there's a lot of hype about AI, and rightly, it's justified to have that hype. I remember, um, I'm a computer science engineer myself, and when I was graduating from college way back when, uh, it used to be called robotics and, you know, and I was thinking about doing my master's and then ultimately PhD there. So 
as a field that's been in the making for decades right now. And essentially, if you break AI down, it is all about storage and compute. So if you have enough data and powerful compute, you can build models, train models, all the rest of it. And it's taken us decades to really have that kind of data that, that'll provide the right context and the compute speed and storage capacity that'll allow AI to happen. So it's been a progression. However, you know, someone defined AI to me that appealed to me the most. And, and let me just run that past you and see if you like that. Uh, it said, you know, it's gonna, whatever is easy is gonna get automated. Whatever is hard will become easy. And whatever is impossible will become possible. So if you think about it in these three building blocks, easy being automated, it's that entire job conversation. So will it cost the current jobs? Will go away. There's no if and, and buts about it. Some of them. The hard becoming easy, that is a entire conversation about opportunity and how many folks who do not have an entry right now into that sector of jobs, that will open up. And the impossible becoming possible is the entire conversation about innovation. It could be about energy, it could be about utility, it could be about safety, it could be about health, it could be about whatever else. So I do think that it'll be a mixed bag. There would be certain jobs that would go away and there would be others that would actually get created. And, um, and I think a lot of conversations happening about trust and the ethical use of AI, et cetera. And it's very difficult to celebrate something that you don't quite understand, you know, Andrew. And, uh, and, and I break it down, in fact, I've written about this in the book that uh, I wrote, it's coming out in the next month or two. And, um, and we talk about how the three building blocks of AI are information, context, and choice. So data essentially converts itself into information. Combining information with context gives you the knowledge, and that knowledge allows you to make choices. Now, if you have the wrong data, you are going to have the wrong sort of output, and you'll make bad decisions. So not all evil that is gonna happen because of AI, or bad things that will happen because of AI are intended it's not the bad actors essentially doing it. Sometimes organizations or governments like you had in your country uh, just, uh, just don't have their house in order from a data perspective, from an information perspective, from a context perspective. And unless you clean that up, AI is, uh, could do as much damage, uh, damage as good. Yeah, exactly. And the entrepreneurs will always be the enthusiasts, the, championship, right. the champions of any kind of move forward in that direction. But you've written that book, and presumably that's a response to the anticipated concerns that you will find as the world makes this transition. Yes, it is. Um, you know, Andrew, we were talking about this just in a forum last week uh, in the Valley. When you democratize anything, all right, so, and, I, and I'm a big proponent of the fact that AI should be democratized. You know, it shouldn't be the elite or only the Facebooks and the Amazons or the Googles of the world being able to use it. Corporations should be able to use it, individuals should be able to use it. When you democratize a technology, 90 odd percent, more than 90 percent will be for good. But as a consequence of democratization, you are also going to make this very powerful tool available to bad actors. Now, the fact really is, that's how the world would be. <laughs> there is no technology innovation which has been 100% good and no bad actors have misused it, right? Um, you're, you talk about internet espionage between countries right now. Well, some would argue it's been made possible because of the internet. So if internet wasn't invented, that espionage probably might not have happened. So there is an evil side to it. But does that mean that internet is all evil and all bad and we should not trust it? No, I think internet's done more good than harm but um, it is not without its own fault and ability to cause harm. So when Single Store talks about elevating human capabilities, it's the same balance of powers, I suppose, that we had even before the industrial age, simply elevated into a, a new level playing field, but a more interesting one and one with more possibilities. Is that what you're saying? Um, yeah, I do think that you know, we are ultimately a provider of information and context. We cannot force a leader's hand to make the choices around 
um, you know, the, the inferences that generative AI draws for them. What we allow organizations to do is to be able to jump onto the AI bandwagon effectively and with their eyes wide open. And we do that by allowing them to, to um, unclutter their data estates. Because Andrew, the only time generative AI actually works is when it works at scale. And so it has to have scale, it has to have speed, and it has to have simplicity. Without those three S's, generative AI in an organization is not gonna work. And we provide you know, scale, simplicity, and speed to enterprises at an unprecedented level. And that's why we're very excited about what the future holds so, for it. Final thought then, Raj, looking at it back through the single store lens, what does the future hold from your perspective for say the next five, 10 years? Yeah, I do think that um, generative AI would be the biggest boon that uh, the world has seen from a technology standpoint. I mean, I have been fortunate enough to have the Y2K, uh, you know, uh, sort of uh, opportunity, and then before that, the internet, and after that, the cloud, and crypto, and all the rest of it that was happening. But I think uh, generative AI would be the most sustainable uh, technological evolution that the world has seen um, I would say uh, ever. So it is one of those technology evolutions which uh, has the ability to change the course of civilization. Um, it, what it would do for transportation, for space travel, for health, we don't even know. But the one thing I do know that it will be transformative and it will be for the good. And um, it will be powered by data, it will be powered by context, and um, and those are the two things that we help uh, organizations do well. We live in interesting times. Raj, pleasure talking to you. Thanks right very much indeed. Thank you very much, Andrew. Thanks for having me.